Welcome to the Tom Matt Show. You are walking through the front door of the retirement zone. And now, your host, Tom Matt. Welcome, welcome everybody to this week's episode of the Tom Matt Show. Thank you so much for joining us. I very much appreciate everyone who joins us on the podcast, the radio broadcast, the stream, however you're picking us up. Thank you so much for being with us last episode. Ashton Henderson from Michigan State University was with us talking about, you know, moving forward with athletics at the university and giving the university some love and some promotions and talking about all of these different, because everything with college athletics has changed and is changing so quickly. It is incredible. I mean, so having a guy who he's an assistant AD over at Michigan State University, super smart young man. Um, former former player at Michigan State. I knew him when I was doing the, the headset thing for the university. And so that was all good. And um, I hope you can check that one out because he is, he's been on the show before. Remember on the website, TomMattShow.com, we have those little, those little tiles, those little cartoons where you can sort through everything, like Spartan Sagas where you could find Ashton, or like today, Mental Health Advocacy for my lead queen, Dr. Deborah Heiser joining us from Long Island. It is still Long Island, right, Deb? Yep, still yeah, here. Okay, yeah. And so for her 40, 41st visit, what's that tell you? She's she's helped us out a lot. She's super cool. Her bio is so old. I've said this before. Her, I kept the ori- <laughs> I kept the original bio forever. It's from the Boomers Rock days, ftns.co, the old streaming service we were on when we first started this bad boy. She's one of my very, very first guests, very first guest. Dr. Deborah Heiser has a PhD in applied developmental psychology, which means she's just super smart, and her whole family is super smart, and her husband's a, another one who's just a rock star guy. Uh, she studied and conducted empirical research on all kinds of topics. She's got all kinds of great ideas. She is the Mentor Project founder, which is super cool. We'll talk about that. We usually talk and plug the Mentor Project as well. And some other topics that we go along with, Deb. She's uh, got Edith. She's got Liam and Aiden, who are now in college. When we started doing this show 13 seasons ago, those boys were just like still playing with peanut butter and setting the house on fire. I mean, it's just like that's... (laughs) And that's a, that's a true story. Well, maybe not setting the house on fire, but you know, we might've had the, the flume in the, in the fireplace might've got a little clogged up and doing all that kind of stuff. But she talks about palliative care. She talks about elder abuse. She talks about all kinds of good things, geriatric topics. She does some coaching services, which want to promote that as well. And we'll put all of that in the, in the show notes, you guys. So you can find Dr. Debbie, if you want to get um, some coaching services from her on performance stuff, we're very similar. That's why I love her so much. She's so great. And she is our go-to psychologist. Today, I threw this one at her. This is how it works. I come up with a some kind of wild topic, which, you know, 41 of them. We read those off on the on last the last time she was here on our season premiere because she always opens the seasons with us on all these different topics that we've covered. And I do not believe we've ever covered this one, but this word being the, the most searched word on Google in 2023, gaslighting. I think there's a lot of mis and disinformation out there. It's a very, very big topic. And so who better than Dr. Debbie to come in here and let us know what in the heck is the lowdown so that you know that you hear it right from the psychologist's face, her voice, or the video, or however you want to do it. I want to welcome back to the radio program my very, very good friend, sister from another mister, Dr. Deborah Heiser. Debbie, here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Thanks for having me on again. I love coming on. Feels like home. <laughs> oh, in this, in this, uh, we'll, we'll promote all that stuff you've been doing on TikTok and all your video stuff and all that. I mean, you've blossomed into this another media star out there doing your thing. But first, you know the drill. It's this is your lifetime. So I guess I'll give you the update. So yeah, Edith please. is going to be 98 this uh, summer in June and she's doing well. And my boys are at school. One is at Gettysburg and one is at Syracuse. Aiden pitches for the club baseball team Sweet. there. Very excited for him. And um, they're both really happy. They're just happy kids. 
Uh, it's really nice. Well, it I'm comes, really fortunate. That comes from and you. And Joel. I can't forget him. Yeah, don't forget Joel, of course. But I want you to kind of step back and talk about who Edith is, because we have a lot of new listeners and um, people on the podcast. Who is the matriarch of this radio program? <laughs> That is Edith, my mother-in-law. When you and I first started talking, Edith, um, we were planning to have Edith move in with us because my father-in-law passed away. So she did. She lived with us for about 10 years. And um, it was quite an exciting time because we have younger kids, my mother-in-law in the house, us. And as you know, from some of our earlier shows, there were quite the hijinks that happened every time we got on our shows from uh, the kids covering themselves in peanut butter to another time where Joel was trying to operate the fireplace, which, you know, we had moved from an apartment, so he didn't know how to use it, was using the oven mitts to try to um, open the flue and the whole house was completely filled with black smoke. And I came out and was like, I can't take an hour to go do something. It was so funny. Every week it'd be another kind of crazy antics that would happen in the household. Oh, it's just it, it, everybody. I'm telling you guys, this is true stuff. This the only in, in radio can these kinds of things happen behind the scenes. And it's all true. I mean, the peanut butter thing with the bird seed, the bird feeders. Uh, we've told this story before, but again, new listeners, please give us that quick snapshot of that thing. We had a couple minutes ago before we go to first break. Go ahead. Kind of share that. That's one of the funniest stories ever. I just, I'll just start laughing here. I'll start crying. I'm going to laugh so hard. So I I would leave to go do the show for one hour. You know, I'd give myself an hour. I put the kids in the kitchen and said, hey, you can make some bird feeders there are some pine cones and things like that you can use and some bird seed. Well, they went to town. <laughs> they got so crazy with the peanut butter and the bird seeds that the neighbor kid was completely covered head to toe in peanut butter. So much so that I had to carry her, you know, at arm's length across the street back to her house. And she, I mean, she had it in her hair she was covered in her her whole body in peanut butter. And I, again, thought, how could that have gone so wrong? But it did. The whole place was literally like my entire kitchen was a bird feeder. It was unbelievable. And how old were they? They were, they were like elementary school, of course. Yeah. Eight, nine. Yeah, yeah. And then the little girl was like seven. <laughs> so do, just, do, you, do you still see the little girl now that she's now big girl? Yeah, I mean, she thankfully has recovered from becoming a human bird feeder. Literally, she had like bird seed all over her, covered in peanut butter. Um, yes, she's a lovely young lady now. <laughs> that's, that's wonderful. Uh, all the experiences with Dr. Deborah. All right, let me set this thing up here, everybody. We're going to come up to break here. Dr. Deborah's back with us, Dr. Debbie Heiser, talking about gaslighting. And Debbie, of course, is the most, she's the best guest when it comes to notes. She sends me her slides. She writes this stuff out, and it's just like it's turnkey. So content, according to Dr. Deb's notes, on gaslighting, the definition, motivations, how it unfolds, effects of gaslighting, and what can you do? And we were just talking pre-show a little bit about, well, Deb, you tell the story. We got a minute to go before we go to break here. I'll give you the signal. But um, what you said about about the gaslighting thing, remember what you said with um, people might mm -hmm. have an argument? <laughs> Yeah, you know, sometimes a fight is just a fight, or a disagreement is just a disagreement. The term is really used um, quite liberally nowadays. So someone will say, "Oh, I was just gaslit. Oh, I was, I was out somewhere and I was, I was gaslighted." Gaslighting takes more than one interaction with someone. Um, so we'll get more into that, but it's really used quite liberally lately. And that's why we need to do this show, everybody. And I just thought about it being the 2023 most searched word on Google. I thought, what the heck? Why not? We'll get Dr. Debbie in here and we'll talk about this. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about what is it, why we need to know more about it, really define it, be certain about what we're doing with these definitions, because language is everything and communication is everything. Dr. Deborah Heiser is with us, joining us from her studio in Long Island, talking about gaslighting. This is The Tom Matt Show. This segment of The Tom Matt Show is brought to you in part by The Source of Light and Power by band leader Archival and broadcaster Mitch Anderson. 
Hear the sound that is endorsed by Odyssey headphones, linear tube audio, RME converters, and Peluso microphones at sourceoflightandpower.bandcamp.com. This is the Tom Matt Show. This segment of the Tom Matt Show is sponsored by Craig, 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 Ameriprise Financial. He's got all of our refirement money, and I'm glad. I don't want to deal with it. I want to do this. I want to do radio. I want to do some video. I want to do some speaking. I want to do some coaching at the gym. You know, I got plenty of things to do. I don't want to have to worry about any kind of thing with finances with when it comes to our savings. So we just put all of that refirement zone money with Ameriprise Financial and Craig and his, his management. And you can hear him as our financial fitness guru. So pick up any of those episodes. He's been on the show, I don't know, 20, 25 times. Not as many as Debbie, but he's he's up there because he's so good. And these guests that we have really want to bring you great information. Craig Stiles is our Ameriprise financial advisor. As I said, we hope that he will be yours. A lot of people at the university, when I was still working at the university full-time, although I'm still out there consulting a lot, ask me about financial stuff. I just say, call Craig. Call Craig, call Craig, call Craig at 517 517- 483-4893, or his 800 number is 1-800-528-1355. His offices are located at 2400 Lake Lansing Road. Suite B is in Brilliant, or B is um, Lansing, Michigan, 48912, 1-800-528-1355 again. Um, stations that have carried the radio show in the past, this, all of the stations in the Michigan Talk Network, I mention them all because I'm so grateful to the stations that have carried us in the past and still do, starting with WGHN 92.1 FM in Grand Haven, Michigan. They were the first to carry us on broadcast radio. WGIM 1240 AM is the flagship of the Michigan Talk Network, which is like 50 stations strong now. WGRW 1340 AM in Grand Rapids carried us for a long, long time. WKLQ 1490 Muskegon over on the west side of the state. WYPV FM 94.5 Mackinac City up in the top of the state, way up in the upper part of the mitten. And, of course, the one that I'm the most proud of, I'm proud of all of the stations, but I'm very, very, very proud to be on PBS at Michigan State University on WKR, which we've been there for quite some time now, being broadcast Sundays at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. AM 870, the flamethrower carrying from East Lansing, Michigan, all the way to the shores of Lake Michigan, and simulcast on 102.3 FM. M. Again, thank you to Craig Styles for creating Desideri Analytics, where we are making light of weighted decisions. And lastly, all right, two more things, actually, everybody. Um, we have four books on Amazon, that thing called Amazon. Go check them out. They're all they're all solid. Uh, that maximize your quality of life. Younger people have started picking it up, and it's kind of crazy. And uh, I like it. It's cool. But again, I want to thank the Michigan Talk Network owners, Steve and Ivy Gruber, for having us on their syndication for a long time now, and we're very, very grateful. And again, carry gratitude in your heart, everybody. Be grateful for the things that come in life because, you know what, life is precious, and I think sometimes we just sort of take it for granted, and you don't want to do that because, let me tell you, it's so valuable. Your time is valuable, your life is valuable, and your people are valuable. All right, back to the topic today with my very good friend, Sister from another Mr. Dr. Debbie, Debbie Heiser, joining us from Long Island, talking about gaslighting. All right, Deb, I'm going to just flip it over to you, take the rest of this segment, talk about, we'll start at the definition and all of your great slides that you sent me on our notes. First off, what do you think of the topic? I, I'm glad you picked it. You know, I wouldn't have thought to pick it because it doesn't, it's not something that I tend to talk about that much, but it is talked about by a lot of people. It's a term that's so frequently used. Um and misused that I think it's a great topic to talk about. Cool. All right. So the definition, let's just start right at the top and go right through your notes and uh, roll through this thing because maybe it's mis is it misunderstood or is it just disinformation? I don't know, Deb, what do you think? Well, you know, first of all, I'll tell people to go check it out from a re- reputable source, go to psychology today. They have a ton of resources on this topic that you can look at. Some of the some of the things that you can check out are real, you know, stories and examples that people give to sort of show you what gaslighting is and what gaslighting isn't. Um, 
So, you know, first of all, arm yourself with some good information. Don't go to, you know, Wikipedia. Don't go to other places. Go to a, a source that, you know, is reputable and check it out. You can also go to APA. Dot org. Um, that's another one. That's the American Psychological Association to check it out. Most people that I talk to are talking about um, gaslighting in a way that they don't really know what the term means, but they're using it as a way to say they kind of got into a fight with somebody and that they feel like they were in the right and the other person was in the wrong or something like that. But if we really dig into what gaslighting is, it's a form of emotional abuse and mental ma- manipulation. And what it does is it leaves the person um, who is the person being mentally abused um, or emotionally abused, questioning their reality and having them wonder if they're in the wrong in pretty much any argument that they're in. So um, this came about a long time ago. It's not a recent term, but it originated from a 1938 play called Gaslight. That was later made into a movie in 1944. And in this um, play and then movie, the husband tries to convince his wife that she's losing her mind to distract her from the criminal behavior that he's engaged in. So she kind of thinks she's going crazy. What happens with gaslighting is that somebody manipulates you into thinking that your version of events didn't really happen the way that you say that they happened. So they can gaslight you by questioning your authority, um, saying, what, are you sure you didn't remember, your your memory must be off. I don't think that you're remembering that right. Are you like losing your mind? Are you crazy? Denying any of the evidence that you have um, or doing everything that they can to make you feel like you're wrong. So a person who is sort of perpetrating this may or may not know that they're even doing it. But the person it's being done to, it can feel really confusing and a person may start to question their self-worth. They may start to question their self-esteem and their own mental capacity. So it's something that does exist. It's out there um, and it's uh, usually done over an extended period of time. So this isn't something where you would say, oh, this happened in five minutes. So that's why it's important to know when it's gaslighting and when it isn't, because sometimes a disagreement is just a disagreement. It's not gaslighting. And we shouldn't be using that term for every disagreement we have. So what we do know is that conflicts that we have can sort of veer into gaslighting if a person is so insistent that the other person starts to doubt themselves, this occurs really when there's a power imbalance. So when one person is has more power than the other in the relationship, and that's when a person who's doing the gaslighting um, undermines the other person's or the gaslightee's sense of self. So there's a need for control and manipulation and leveraging power with that. Control, power, leveraging, yes, all of it. Yes, yes, yes. Gaslighting, we're going to deep dive this bad boy. This is an episode you're going to want to check out for sure. Dr. Debbie's here talking about gaslighting, her 41st visit to The Tom Matt Show. And we will be right back. You're listening to The Tom Matt Show. Thank you again to our segment two sponsor, Craig Stiles of Ameriprise Financial. For more information on services provided by Craig, please visit AmeriprizeAdvisors.com slash Craig dot Stiles or by calling 517-483-4893. You're tuned in to The Tom Matt Show. 3rd segment of The Tom Matt Show is sponsored by Jamie, 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 Jamie White, White Law. If you missed the first episode when Jamie was on the show, you need to go check that out because the story of how Jamie became an attorney through a racially insensitive episode with his family back in the 70s and his dad almost dying in an assault because of a biracial, because he's from a biracial family. And back then that didn't fly very well in Southern Michigan. I'm so opposed to this kind of stuff. It's just like, but. That's what I'm telling you about this story. It was a really good story, and he's a super successful guy. 
And White Law PLLC is getting it done. And they sponsor this segment because they, they it's where justice meets compassion. That's their tagline. White Law is your advocate, our advocate in times of need. Sponsors the Mad Dog Minutes as well. They are here to listen, support, and fight for what you deserve. Guarantee it. Call White Law today for your free consultation. You can go to our website too where all of our sponsors are located at the bottom of the homepage and click on through, but you can call white law 517-777-9785. Visit whitelawpllc.com or again, go to our website, tomatshow.com and click on through at the bottom of the homepage for Craig, Brock, Fletcher, and Jamie White and other people as well. And You'll get the service, you get the people, you get the trust, and they will take good care of you. So I appreciate Jamie White very much. I look forward to talking to him. Um, hopefully this weekend we got to set up his next episode, which is, we're going to do the recording session here next week. Anyway, back to the show. This is a good one. Well, they always are with Dr. Debbie, and I like to think all of our episodes are great, everybody. Dr. Debbie Heiser, longest-running guest on our radio program. We've grown together to become professional media people. And I'm proud to say that because I've learned so much from Debbie. I've called Debbie for, again, if you need coaching, we'll get your number. We'll put it in the show notes. You need some coaching. I've gone to Debbie for some coaching. She's helped me on stuff. And it's just, she's the one. She's a trustworthy soul. And you want to, you want to know about her services. We'll talk about that later. But today's topic is gaslighting. And Debbie is always the one who is right at the forefront of this stuff, sends over the notes, we just went through the definition and how this is a misused term. Deb, where do you want to pick that up? I mean, we got uh, motivation here coming up here. Um, go ahead. You take it from there. I just did all your intro work. Please, I'm, I'm just dying to hear what you have to say about all this. So, you know, the main thing to realize is that gaslighting is a need to control. It's manipulating somebody and it's leveraging the power. So those are the real components of gaslighting. Gaslighting isn't having hurt feelings. It's not having your viewpoints challenged. It's more than that. So that's when, you know, a person says, oh, I was just gaslighted because somebody didn't agree with me on something or they challenged what I had to say or they hurt my feelings. That's not being gaslit. That isn't gaslighting. It's really bigger than that. It's being controlled or manipulated having um, your power leveraged in a way. Um, that's really what gaslighting is. So it exists when there's a power dynamic within a relationship, and that causes a person being gaslighted to question themselves and their own sense of reality. So really, if you're in an argument or a disagreement and you're um, not feeling like you um, don't have your sense of reality um in check in any kind of a way, then that's when you should really be looking at that and say, hmm. So often gas, a gaslighter is um, verbally aggressive and they um, can turn a conversation back and forth, blaming the other person. They might even lie outright about what took place. Um, the statements are being used like, are you crazy? Or I never said that. Or maybe you have, you know, some kind of memory loss. Maybe are you demented? Things like that are things that you might hear. So if a person is on the receiving end of this behavior, that person is often left feeling um, sort of completely unsure of themselves, worn out because it's exhausting and wondering, really, maybe I am crazy Maybe I should just avoid future discussions because I do not want this kind of disagreement escalating in this kind of sort of disorienting manner. So a person who's being gaslit or the gaslightee is um, usually resigned and they really are questioning their reality. So that is the difference between a disagreement. Oftentimes people have disagreements and they don't feel like they're questioning their reality. They're saying, I'm right, they're wrong. That's not gaslighting. That's really one of the first key things about that. And then we, when we think about the motivation, what is it that gets a person to want to engage in gaslighting? It's to avoid accountability for their bad behavior. 
So also look at that within an argument, having like a political discussion where two people are sort of going at it back and forth. That motivation really isn't there, probably. It's also to control the other person's behavior. So look at that. Is that motivation existing there? Because that's really the motivation for gaslighting. And um, that's where a lot of people can make the mistake when they're in an argument and they'll say, I've, I've been gaslit. Is that motivation really there? And are you just having a disagreement? Are your feelings just hurt? Or are you feeling like your reality isn't in check? You know, when you say the avoidance and the accountability, and back to the first segment, Debbie, Dr. Debbie Heiser's with us, everybody. We're talking about gaslighting today, really defining and figuring out what the heck this is. The control, the power, and the leverage. I mean, if you're in a control dynamic in a relationship and you're being gaslit, it's not having an argument. It's 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 way more than that. And so let's not misuse this term. Let's understand what it means. Because when it's used, when this is happening, this is pretty serious, right, Deb? I mean, this is this mm-hmm. is nothing you want to play around with. This if, if this is happening to you, then we'll talk about this as we come out of uh, the next break. But if this is happening, you need to understand when it is and when it isn't. Because again, confusion. What's your take? So, yeah, we have to know when it is and how it can unfold. There are certain things to look for. So, again, you know, you can go look up a lot of this stuff in places like Psychology Today or um, APA.org. But some studies have been done and they show that there are four behavioral patterns that are pretty common in gaslighting relationships. And some of these things are things to look out for. One is love bombing. So that's when you get a ton of attention showered on you. And this is usually at the start of the relationship. And boy, does love bombing feel good, right? People like that. So then they're all in. Um, And then another is the next thing is progressively separating or isolating um, someone from their friends and family. So you've been love bombed. Now you're saying, oh, no, 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 don't spend time with uh, your friends and family. Spend your time with me. You're separating or isolating them. The next thing is unpredictability. A person who's the gaslighter is completely unpredictable in their behavior. They can go from one emotional extreme to another. And then finally, cold shoulder, um, withholding or withdrawing affection and communication. So if you hear, you know, hear what I'm saying right now, it's unfolding in a in a kind of chaotic way, but in a in a methodical chaotic way. If you think about it, there's a lot going on, but at the same time, there's a real method to this, and so it unfolds in that way. And a person gets caught up early on, and they they aren't really seeing it happening. So there are some real effects that this can have on a person. Um, which is a diminished sense of self, um, an increased uncertainty, guardedness, and mistrust of others. You know, if somebody's saying, hey, hey, no, 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 don't listen to them, listen to me. No, I know what happened, that kind of a thing. It makes a person really question their reality and even question others. It's important to really take note of what's happening in your life and when you're in relationship with a person or um, a a friend or, you know, a relationship that's more intimate, um, what's happening in it? What's going on so that you can really parse out the emotions from what might be occurring with that person? Dr. Debbie's here. Gaslighting. This is The Tom Man Show. Thank you again to our segment three sponsor, White Law PLLC, where justice meets compassion. White Law is your advocate in times of need. We are here to listen, support, and fight for what you deserve. Contact White Law today for your free consultation. Visit us at whitelawpllc.com or call 517-777-9785. This is the Tom Matt Show. This segment of the Tom Matt Show is sponsored by Kingpin. Brock, 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 Brock Fletcher, selling team of Keller Williams Realty. Just posted up some videos. You look at some of our Instagram stuff and our Facebook, you guys, and you see some of these new posts that are going up with Craig, 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 and Jamie, 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 and Brock, Brock, Brock. Thanks to Vanessa, our wonderful virtual assistant. She's crushing it, doing some good things. Just put some stuff up for Brock. I just saw it, and it looks great. You can call Brock Fletcher. And again, 
full disclosure with all the of our of our sponsors. We utilize all their services. Okay, want to make that clear so that if you're wondering, don't wonder anymore, and just be and rest assured and have the confidence that our integrity means everything, especially when it comes to our sponsors, and that's why we have really good people who sponsor us because a Brock 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 real estate is huge, finance is huge, and law enough said, okay? Selling team of Keller Williams Realty, you can reach them at 517-853-6408 or the super secret number that's not so super secret to Brock's cell phone, 517-303-3262, 517-303-3262 or go to kwsellingteam.com. And again, as I said earlier, you can always get our sponsors from the bottom of our homepage at TomMattShow.com and just click on through, sell your home without hassles like we did. Because again, full disclosure, Brock sold Big House Holt. He helped us buy Little House Lansing, which we're doing this recording session at right as we speak. And it was wonderful. Thank you to Mike Dedman. How you doing, Mikey? Nice to see, say your name every time I like to say that. Most agents start marketing your home. When they get the listing, that's not how Brock rolls. Brock is the kind of guy who's going to, he's he's investing money, he's not spending, he's investing money in sources that can get the word out so that you get the best service. And I'm telling you, that little excerpt that we just did from the last episode when Brock was here on the reality of real estate, and he had these like six points that he went through, gold, you want to watch that, and listen to it, because it's very important to understand how to navigate this kind of stuff again. I'm not a realtor. I'm a media guy and that's what we do. And so we need other people to help us make this process happen. Brock Fletcher, again, 517-303-3262. Sell your home without any hassles and you will get the number you want because they're the best. And that's that. All right, back to the show. Gaslighting with Dr. Debbie Heiser. Deb, before we move forward in your notes um, on the motivation and how it unfolds, when you were talking about progressively separating and isolating the victim from friends and family, I find that very interesting because they kind of work this little system, love bomb, then separate, then get really up and down and unpredictable. It's kind of like this pattern, right? Is it, it, it just sort of like follows these steps. And this is how people can, uh, can really understand and rationalize what's happening. Am I, am I thinking the correct way? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, you're already all in, all in with the love bombing. It feels great. Who doesn't love that? Um, showered with attention. You're, you know, really being treated, you know, in such a way that you think, wow, this person really cares. And then it's, you know, the separating from friends and family doesn't feel so bad because you're already thinking, wow, this is so fabulous. It doesn't feel negative um, at the time. So you're kind of already in it and then you're moving forward and then you're surprised by some of the unpredictable changes in the behavior and maybe emotional extremes. But you'll think, oh, well, OK, it's been great. It's fine. That was a one time thing or I, I must have been mistaken for how I felt about something. And then the cold shoulder is withdrawing and withholding affection and communication. And if you've already sort of been separated from others, you're now separated from somebody who you've been, you know, really closely interacting with without many other people as your support system. It's, it's just a pattern, everybody. It's a pattern. And again, it goes back to what Deb said in the first segment, control, power, and leveraging. And if you're emotionally, if you're on the edge or you're really, I, what I think happens sometimes, Debbie, correct me if I'm wrong, but people are so desirous for having a relationship that they they open themselves up to this love bombing. And it's just, it's so overwhelmingly awesome that they just completely buy in. And these some of these gaslighters, some of these people, they can be really nasty people. I mean, if they're a narcissist or sociopath or have those sociopathic kind of tendencies, and I know I'm going into your field here, so I'm sorry if I overstep my boundaries here, playing a psychologist on the radio, but I like talking to a psychologist on the radio. But again, you may have some really bad people who are preying on vulnerable people. 
And that's kind of where I'm coming from. It's like, be careful. Is that is that another good kind of feel here? I think, yeah, you know, the main thing to think about with this is to say to yourself, am I in an unbalanced relationship or am I in a balanced relationship? Do I feel like I can speak my mind and can is somebody else able to speak their mind? And if somebody's asking you to leave your friends and family and spend less time with them, that's a red flag. You know, really make sure that you're not being so exclusive with someone that you aren't spending time with others because others are there to help with your reality checks. You can run stuff by them and say, hey, oh, my gosh, I just um, I was feeling this way and I, I don't know, maybe I had it all wrong. Maybe I had it right. Can you help me figure it out? And that person can help to be your reality check. So if you've already been sort of removed from people, you don't get to have that reality check. So some of the things to really look out for are, do I have a social support network? And make sure that you always keep that, that you don't, you know, exclude yourself from others, that you don't withdraw from others, that you're always able to keep yourself in the loop with others so you can get feedback um, so that you can be with people that you still trust, that you always, you know, have trusted. And you don't have to be in the relationship with the person who's gaslighting you. Leave. Move on. You can do that. That's the thing. I mean, don't feel like you're so hooked on this. I had a situation today with a person who I know who is, I've gotten to know over time in the last year or so. And it seems like I come across these these um, situations, Deb, with um, alcohol abuse. I don't know if I'm just a magnet from my own, from my own perspective, because I'm so sensitive to it, but I've always been so open about sharing that. But people in a relationship that are in a relationship with with a problem drinker, like I am, or a alcoholic, you could be in a really sticky situation where people want to change. They say they're going to change. You need to have them change. And they don't change. They'll just they will play games and maybe even perhaps use gaslighting as a technique to get you to believe it's all on you. Um, I'm not really doing that. I'll get better. Is that, again, going down the right lane, Deb? Yeah, go back to, does, is somebody trying to avoid accountability for their own bad behavior? And are they trying to control someone? So look at those as the motivators. Is somebody trying to, to avoid accountability? That's pretty easy to see. You know, maybe you could say to yourself, I'm not quite sure. Maybe I wasn't right or wasn't wrong, you know, whatever the deal is. But if somebody's avoiding accountability, um, take note of that. That's a red flag. Um, And obviously, if they're trying to control um, others. But yeah, you know, if you're in a relationship and somebody is saying, yeah, yeah, um, no, I didn't. um, I wasn't out with someone else. I don't know what you're talking about. No, uh, that phone number in there. No, no, no. That isn't, you know, somebody else's or, oh, I really wasn't, um, you know, using um, drugs or alcohol. Those sorts of things, trying to avoid accountability when somebody really um, was engaged in things. That's something that most people can really detect that. And their gut instinct is telling them the, the correct answer for that. All right, let's set it up the the last segment coming back with Dr. Debbie here, effects of gaslighting, and then what can you do? Let's just do a quick 30-second, Deb, and then we'll go to break here. Go ahead and set that up, would you please? Sure. Uh, So, you know, in terms of gaslighting, I think the most important thing to do is to really trust your own judgment um, and trust the fact that you probably have friends and family who have your best interest in mind um, and that you should be really relying on them. If you feel that you are being gaslit, seek them out and say, Hey, can I have a reality check here? There you go. Can I have a reality check? I've underlined accountability. It's got like three lines under it. I'll probably put three more lines under it because that's the whole problem with a lot of these behavioral situations that go on in the world. It's lack of accountability. It's not my fault. It's your fault. This kind of thing. I didn't cause that. All of this kind of crap. It's just like it just continues to go on and on. Gaslighting. So fascinating. Dr. Deborah Heiser's here. I'm Tom Matt. And this is The Tom Matt Show. 
Thank you again to our segment four sponsor, Brock Fletcher, real estate agent at the selling team with Keller Williams Realty. For more information on services provided by Brock, please call his personal cell phone at 517-303-3262 or by emailing Brock at kwsellingteam.com. This is the Tom Matt Show. Remember, if you want to get a hold of us at the show, topics, questions, go to our website, TomMatShow.com. Find all of our sponsors there. You can find all of our social media there. Find all of the podcasts there. All of those little 12 cartoons that we have there, the little slides, go there. Uh, Mental health advocacy is obviously our number one topic on this radio program, has been since day one, thanks to Dr. Debbie Heiser, our guest today. So please go over there and check it out. And if you got any questions, send us, there's a contact box there. Just send us a note and the email goes right to Sandy and she tells me about all of those. So please reach out anytime you'd like, and we'll be happy to be assistance to you because we want to be servant leaders and that's how we roll. All right, Deb, what would you like to share with the, uh, the listeners? You've got things happening. You've got a new book coming out. You've got um, all of your coaching services. Please take your time, let everybody know what you do, Um, the mentor project. I want to first uh, thank you for always giving me a platform for being able to talk about some of the things that I'm doing. Um, You're welcome. One of them that I've talked about a lot for a long time is the mentor project um, where we really believe, and you just said servant leader, um, believe in being able to give back. And we have an organization that has roughly a hundred mentors, really stellar leaders Um, individuals from astronauts to artists who mentor students around the world for free. And so if you know somebody who'd like to be mentored, um, that is K through university, you can even be in graduate school, Um, who doesn't need a mentor or five? Um, The people who um, get mentored by us do amazing things. Um, One person patented twice, uh, but with, with about I think 68 different concepts that are in her patents um, last year and another one patented twice um, with a a whole different concept and they're starting companies. Uh, We've sent an artist to Tanzania to teach um, cartooning to a a class, a whole entire school of 500 students. Um, and we're really committed to making change. So we've impacted roughly 100,000 students around the world. And so it's easy, mentorproject.org, and click the Become a Mentee button, and off to the races you go. There's no fee involved at all. Um, Because we've been doing that, um, I was asked to write a book on mentoring, a comprehensive book that will really encompass all the different ways anyone can mentor and all the benefits you get from mentoring and from being a mentee. And that's going to probably come out in the fall. It's I've contracted with Wiley on that. And so I hope that people will check that out when it comes out. And finally, I coach. You can go to my website, debraheiser.com, and you can check out um, my coaching that I do. I look at um psychology from the point of view as an applied developmental psychologist of what we have to look forward to. I tend to work with people who are in transition. So it's not somebody who has something diagnosable. Anytime you're in a transition, though, you might feel stress or you might feel uneasy or anxious um, or need a path forward. And that's where I work with individuals who, you know, from CEOs to people who are, um, you know, leaders in other areas. I even work with, you know, people who've held jobs that have a time limit and they retire early. If you're a teacher, you're a police officer, fireman, you may be retiring early. And so it's those sorts of transitions that I help people with all the time. It's really important to understand. I ran into a friend recently, um, former colleague, Deb, that retired about 15 years ago. And he's not that much older than I am. And he seemed very he seemed okay with his life and where he's at, but I, I just got the feeling that he was sort of lost and he'd like kind of run that 15 years of retirement, retirement, 
and didn't really refire and was sort of gets caught up in that whole, now what do I do? I'm too old. I'm too this. I'm too that. And I am telling you guys right now, getting a coach like a Dr. Debbie to get you through that transitional period, we talk about this kind of stuff all the time. I've learned so much about generativity, and I'm going to be doing a marketing campaign on you know, me turning 65 here in another few months. It's like, it's, it's really, you have so much potential if you get with the right people and you get the right mindset. And really it comes down to having the right mindset. So again, going back to all that she said, give her a shout. I mean, get some coaching services, especially for that transitional period, because we all have a lot to give. And Debbie, you know this for a fact that our young people, I deal with college students every single day. I'm at the university every day training. And they really, they they love the interaction. Once you break that and you build that trust with them and they see you there consistently and doing the thing and putting the work in and they start to respect you, they want to get with you. I had a kid today come up to me and say, hey, I need to talk to you about an idea I have. I said, great, I'll be done with this class here in a little bit. And sure as heck, I went and found him in the weight room and there he was and he had some regret and I told him who to get a hold of. Boom, boom, boom. That's how it works. Just making those connections. Our young people need us so much that if you get with a Dr. Debbie, you're getting close to the transition and don't wait too long. It's never too late to start. But if you can do this ahead of time, like Sandy and I did, we were planning this 10, 15 years before we refired. So we were refiring before we were refiring. And the rest is history on all of that. So Debbie, thank you for that. I'm I'm so happy that you uh, that you help people like that because that's a big deal. And our young people, especially those these young people who went through COVID, they got robbed two years plus. I mean, we're going to be seeing the effects of that for a long. Do you agree with that? Do you think we're going to see the effects? Absolutely, I see that in the students that I teach. It's hard. Those poor kids. That was a, you know, right at the time when they're supposed to be running around, finding out who they are. They were stuck in the house. It's just right. hard. All by themselves and not developing, getting reps in relationships, getting reps with friends, getting, you know, figuring it out. And now you put this number on their age and they're, well, you're 24 years old. You should know what to do. Well, not really. What I tell people when I coach younger people is like, if I gave you a two-year pass, Think about it. The woman that I'm working with, I mentioned earlier, 25 years old. When I first started working with her, I said, you're you're actually 23 because you got robbed of two years. And that made her feel a lot. I tell you, it, it, you could feel it, the enlightenment go off in her head. So, okay, back to what we can do with the gaslighting. We're pretty close to this, but let's reinforce this because the effects of gaslighting, I think we've, have we covered that um, enough, Deb, or where do you want to go with this? Because we've got about four or five minutes to go here. So I think, you know, if we really think about gaslighting, try to think for yourself, you know, part of being in relationships with others is making sure that you are present in the relationship and that you always feel in control of your relationships and yourself, not the other person, but in control in terms of being in a relationship. Let me ask you what that means because I want to, I think I know what it means, but when you say to be present in the relationship, what to you as a psychologist, what does that mean? And can you throw a, a quick definition on that? Sure. You know, if you're in a relationship with somebody, you want to be the person, you don't necessarily, it's nice to feel love bombed, right? But you, there's two people involved. Where are you? Are you just somebody waiting for things to happen? Or are you somebody who's present and active in the relationship? What are you doing as part of this relationship? So a st- a sitting back and taking note and saying, do I have an equal footing in this relationship? Am I being seen? Am I being heard? Am I being active in this relationship? Or am I waiting for things to happen to me? Am I waiting to get, you know, have more attention on myself, uh, for, for myself? Am I waiting to see what happens or am I actively involved in this relationship? So the the part I'm really getting at with that is there are some people who think, oh, great, I've met somebody. I'm good. And it, it, it it's that they're sort of waiting for their prince charming 
to come along and they're waiting for somebody to sort of sweep them off their feet, take care of everything. And that's a hard, hard way to be. You want to make sure that you have value, that you are valued, that you value yourself and that you are offering value to the other person as well. There's a two way street, just like in mentoring. Great, great definition there. Okay. What can you do? We got two minutes to go before we got to close the show, Deb. What can people do with all of this? I think the one thing we should all do is when we're, we're feeling like somebody is not, um, maybe we're in a disagreement or someone isn't seeing our point of view that we really take a look at how we are having disagreements and we we look at is a person disagreeing with my thoughts and my feelings did somebody just hurt my feelings were they maybe being a jerk there's a difference between a being gaslit and having somebody maybe acting like a jerk in a moment um take a look at that and again look at is the person trying to avoid accountability um, are they trying to manipulate you or are they maybe just not agreeing with your point of view? Because if you are looking to get out of a conversation saying, I'm, I've am i just been gaslit, maybe you're the one that's looking to avoid the accountability. Maybe you're the one that is looking to um, move and get away from that and not have to continue the dialogue. So you might be gaslighting and not knowing it, or you may be accusing someone of gaslighting and they weren't. Excellent point. You may have been raised this way. Maybe it came from a family situation and that's all you know. Great advice. Things that we need to do as we work on ourselves and get better. These are the types of things that you have to do that introspection with. And with that, I have to close the show. If our show fits your business or group's mission, we want to be of service to you. Always remember, always remember, before you can share love with others, you must love yourself first. And when you share love with others, it's not gaslighting. It's sharing love honestly. I want to thank Dr. Deborah Heiser for being with us. We'll talk to everybody next week. Thank you to Sandy, Craig, Brock, Jamie, 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 David, DeMarco. Have a great week, everybody. Go out and ignite your life. Lastly, I want to say thank you to Mitch Anderson, our producer. Tom Matt shows a production of Boomers Rock Media. We want to bring your story to life. Thank you so much. The Tom Matt Show is produced by Mitch Anderson, Black Circle Studios, original music from the source of light and power by the Ark of All.